In this episode, SpaceX gets ready for a static fire test with SN5. The Canadian Space Agency announces that MDA will build Canada Arm 3 for the Lunar Gateway, and we take a deep dive into some robotic arm history. Starship Update Almost a month after the destruction of Starship SN4, SpaceX has begun testing with Starship SN5. On Tuesday of this week, June 30th, SpaceX completed ambient pressure tests with SN5 and commenced cryogenic pressure tests, filling the tanks with liquid nitrogen. With pressure tests, SpaceX is ideally aiming to achieve tank pressures in the range of 6 to 8.5 bar. After SN4 successfully passed cryogenic testing, SpaceX proceeded to install a Raptor engine and then commenced wet dress rehearsal, loading the tanks with liquid methane and liquid oxygen, before proceeding to what spin prime, preburner, and an eventual series of static fart tests. And so far with SN5 testing, we've seen a similar trajectory. A new Raptor engine has just been delivered to the site in Boca Chica and should be installed soon. So far, SN4 and SN5 are the only full-scale test articles to make it past cryogenic pressure tests. Hopefully, SN5 survives static fire tests and makes it to the eventual 150-meter hop. Last week Friday, June 26, the Canadian Space Agency announced that it has selected MDA, McDonnell, Detweiler and Associates to build Canada's contribution, Canadarm3, for the Lunar Gateway, as part of the NASA-led Artemis program. According to the Canadian Space Agency, the system will be composed of several distinct elements including a large 8.5 meter arm, a smaller, more dexterous arm, as well as a set of detachable tools. Canada has a long history with space robotics, spanning over 30 years, and the country is considered to be a leader in the field. In addition to this, NASA and CSA have a long history of international collaboration. In 1975, NASA and the Canadian National Research Council signed a Memorandum of Understanding for Canada's development of the Shuttle Remote Manipulator System, or Canadarm. The contract was later awarded to SPAR Aerospace, whose robotics division was later acquired by MDA in 1999. Six years later, after the signing of the agreement, on November 13, 1981, Canadarm made its debut on STS-2. The arm, which was fixed to the shuttle at one end and controlled by astronauts on board the shuttle, was initially designed to capture, manipulate, and deploy payloads on orbit. After the Space Shuttle Columbia accident, the arm was launched alongside an orbital boom sensor system, which was used to inspect the heat shield tiles and other parts of the shuttle after launch and prior to re-entry. The initial Canada arm design was retired at the end of the Space Shuttle program. The slightly longer and more robust Canada arm 2 also known as the Space Station Remote Manipulator System, was launched on STS-100 on April 19, 2001. And liftoff of the Space Shuttle Endeavour, extending the reach of the Space Station while extending partnerships above the Earth. Making its debut almost exactly 20 years after that of its predecessor. Canadarm2 is one of three components of a larger robotic system on the ISS known as the Mobile Service System. The other two components of the MSS are the Mobile Remote Service Base System and the Special Purpose Dexterous Manipulator, also known as Dexter. Dexter can be attached to Canadarm2 and is used to conduct maintenance work on station. Historically, Canadarm2 was instrumental in the construction of the space station. Today, the arm is essential in performing station maintenance, moving supplies, equipment, and astronauts around station, as well as capturing and berthing spacecraft to the ISS. Unlike the Canada Arm, the Canada Arm 2 doesn't have a fixed end. Instead, both ends of the arm have what's known as latching end effectors, which allow the ends to attach themselves to objects like spacecraft or anchor onto station at various power, data, and video ports or as NASA calls them, power data grapple fixtures. This allows the arm, as NASA describes it, to walk end over end, connecting to these fixtures as it travels along the exterior of the ISS. Canadarm3, the arm for the gateway. The design of Canadarm3 is expected to leverage on lessons learned from Canadarm and Canadarm2. While there are quite a lot of similarities between previous generations of Canadarm and Canadarm3, there especially are a lot of similarities between 2 and 3. There are also some notable differences and quite a lot of significant improvements. Like Canadarm2, Canadarm3 will have 7 degrees of freedom, though this time the arm is expected to have extended range of motion, with each joint able to rotate almost 360 degrees. 
Perhaps of particular note is the use of artificial intelligence. Unlike Kendarm 2, which must be manually controlled by ground operators or astronauts on board the ISS, Kendarm 3 is designed to primarily work autonomously though it can be controlled manually. The design also improves on Canada Arm 2 in that this time, this version of the arm will be equipped with a 3D vision sensor tool that maps objects around it, as well as six color 4K cameras. NASA and CSA haven't announced just yet when we could expect the launch of Canada Arm 3. We already know, though, that the power and propulsion element and Halo are the first two elements of the gateway that will be launched. That launch so far is targeted for November 2023. So far, the SpaceX Falcon Heavy with the extended payload fairing has been highlighted as a potential launcher for those elements. So the Canada Arm 3 should launch sometime beyond that 2023 date. We'll have to stay tuned for our update as to when. We seem to be at a new era of the space industry. We're seeing innovations daily that continue to improve on existing technology and private companies working together with NASA and its international partners are really helping to ensure a continued rate of innovation. And well, with SpaceX, it looks like the company again will be taking things into overdrive over the weekend and in the upcoming week, with critical Starship testing and an upcoming Starlink launch.